we are very clinical product, mm. creating so much passion and emotion. Mm. And I love this paradox because we are in a living paradox. But Absolutely. at the same time, we always say that our clients are in shorts like us. There are lots of ways you can have transport, but you choose a McLaren because of the emotional connection, it's fun, you enjoy it. I always say, so in, in the two different industries, we share a passion for weight. We make by far the lightest cars in our class. We announced a new car now, under 1200 kilograms, almost unbelievable. Vicar makes the lightest watches in the world with the most advanced materials. Yeah. Where we go with the materials is beyond anything people have done before. It's innovative, it's creative. We use new materials to drive better function but then where they start going into art is where they then get this emotional connection. And neither of us make things just to have as pieces of art that's, that sit in a collection. So Ricard wants people to wear his watches. They do wear his watches. They love wearing their watches. People buy our cars to drive our cars. I feel exactly the same. I hate gimmicks. Uh, yeah. Everything that has not a real, proper objective. I mean, we shall never use a material, as McLaren is doing, uh, yeah, they have the same philosophy, uh, uh, just because it's no. in the marketing uh, trend, no. Uh, it, it, everything has to have a clear objective, a very uh, a specified objective. Ah, it's about authenticity. Everything is for a reason. And so there's, there's a logic behind it, but that doesn't stop it being emotional. It just means that actually someone's being intellectual about their appreciation of it because it's real. We are in a world that is quite artificial and we have clients that asking for top authenticity asking yeah. for genuinity, asking for real matters. If you're doing something real and people believe in it, they share it. And that's how it's grown. It's, it's, it's grown naturally from what we believe in, not from a desire to be achieving this communication or this fame, you know? Here, we go much deeper. Yeah. That is to say, it's a very serious product uh, that has many of the McLaren codes that can be recognized. Of course, the McLaren colors, but again, you have substance, you have a fantastic, beautiful result, but it's a very serious object. Absolutely, and the thing is, it's from the heart, you know? That's the thing I just yeah, yeah, for sure. love about our friendship, but it's, um, it's the way it comes out. Nature, whilst it doesn't influence everything we do, there's an inherent understanding in how it works. We all grow up surrounded by nature. We all understand why a teardrop is the way it is, we understand the profile of a bird's wing, the things we're used to seeing. And when you stop and look at the world around you, even down to where pebbles have been worn away by the water, there's certain hydrodynamic, aerodynamic forms. And I think bringing that and making that core to what the McLaren design language is, has a really strong visual story. And for me, great design tells a great story. Sometimes people ask us if we feel as though we're on the edge of what we can do with the cars. And my answer is always, well, no, because technologies improve, our understanding on the aerodynamics continuously improves. You only need to look at the Formula One cars. It's on a constant evolution, again, just like nature. There's always a way to incrementally improve what you're doing. And as a company, we have that exact mindset. How can we keep improving? So uh, there's always more to come. Recently, we started a collaboration with Richard Mille. And it's been fantastic. There's been so many similarities in the way we approach a problem and the way we approach the, product, the design of our products. So saving weight, vibration or impact resistance. So they, Richard Mill, they really set out to take performance to extremes. And that's really what McLaren's about. So there's a really natural relationship there. Je trouve que la 720S, dessinée par Rob Melville, a une beauté hypnotique et je souhaitais que l'on puisse retrouver sur la RM1103 McLaren ces formes à la fois très fluides et très esthétiques. Nous avons beaucoup travaillé sur les éléments du chronographe, les poussoirs et aussi les caches poussoirs et on retrouve sur ces derniers les courbes présentes sur les flancs des McLaren 720S et 570S. En effet, les McLaren 720S m'ont fasciné dès le début. Ils ont une forme inédite qui intègre deux ouvertures pour canaliser l'air jusqu'au radiateur. Comme beaucoup d'entre nous, j'ai toujours été fasciné par la McLaren F1, dessinée par Gordon Murray et présentée en 1992. Je me souviens d'une photo de Richard en tenue de pilote aux côtés d'une McLaren F1, justement, 
et nous en avons parlé, ainsi qu'avec les ingénieurs à l'usine, et on a décidé d'intégrer la forme du capot avant de McLaren F1 à la boîte de la RM1103. La couronne est un élément clé d'une montre, c'est le lien entre l'homme et la mécanique. Ici, c'est le dessin de la jante de la McLaren que nous avons choisi pour son esthétique et pour sa grande complexité, en particulier les neuf branches qui sont squelettées dans plusieurs directions. On peut dire que le travail d'usinage du titane par nos équipes est une véritable prouesse ainsi que l'étape de terminaison puisque c'est un élément en volume très difficile à réaliser à l'échelle d'une montre. Chez Richard Mille, la courbe du bracelet prolonge celle du fond de la boîte puisque les montres Richard Mille épousent parfaitement le poignet des personnes qui les portent. Il était intéressant de créer un bracelet spécifique et nous avons travaillé le dessin avec la forme du Speedmark McLaren et aussi de certaines prises d'air de la McLaren. Donc finalement, ce bracelet typique RM1103 McLaren a une forme inédite. La RM1103 succède parfaitement à la RM1, c'est une vraie bête de course. C'est un chrono emblématique et au style parfaitement inimitable. Et la RM1103 McLaren repousse encore les limites. Thank you.